So this next video is going to focus on um, the more advanced types of selections, uh, selecting by attributes and selecting by location. Uh, you know, as I say in the last video, we dive a lot deeper into kind of the concepts behind selections, why they're there, what they do in the desktop videos. This one's really kind of aimed at uh, teaching the new mechanics of how it works in Pro. Um, you know, but I'll, I'll reference some, some conceptual issues as I go as well. Um, selecting by attributes and select by location, definitely two of the most powerful tools in, in any geographic information system platform. They're what allows you to use the I, information, or the G, geography, to move from your whatever, 583 values, down to a, a smaller subset that meets some important criteria you want, might want to analyze. You know, for example, uh, is how we used to do it back in, in desktop. Uh, this was the, all the parks in Chicago and then some, you know, information about uh, how many different types of basketball courts or beaches or, or, or whatever they have, um, you know, in those areas. And if I wanted to do select by attribute in desktop, I would either go to selection, select by attribute, um, you know, or I would kind of hit this little window here and do select by attribute. And this little SQL window would come up you know, where essentially this is the field. These are kind of values it's asking you to click to make life easier. You know, so I might actually do something like, hey, tell me or show me all the basketball courts that are greater than or equal to two. And then of the 583, it would highlight the 206 parks that happen to have um, more basketball courts uh, that are two or more basketball courts on them. A um, whole bunch of other things, you know, we learned in other videos that I'm not going to dive into, um, you know, here, like how you can use the word like, like park, like, uh, you know, to find sort of what's inside of a park, like maybe I'll find any park that starts with whatever and then has the word I-N-K at some point in it, and, you know, I know that that's going to definitely highlight Ginkgo here, and apparently there's another park that meets that criteria too. There's all kinds of ways, if you know a little bit of SQL, um, that you could go a little nuts here, not for this video to discuss. So the big difference when we get to Pro, if we wanted to do this same thing, first is the way to get it is here. This is the way you get to select by attribute. You're not going to be able to get it uh, as you had previously um, through looking at the window here. You know, so I'm just going to minimize this just because it's good to sort of have it around, um, you know, to see what I'm doing from another vantage point. But I'll come up here, my selection window uh, will, will open here. And again, it automatically docks itself. Remember, you can always grab this and move it. You don't have to have it docked next to your catalog, right? I like it there for right now, but you don't have to, right? It can come out and just be its own little window. All right, so select by attribute. Hey, what am I selecting? Chicago Parks. We'll show some examples of this in a second, but this is the same as previously, right? There's multiple kinds of selections. You could start from scratch and just do a raw selection. Maybe you have something selected already and you want to add to it without removing or losing any of the selection you did previously. Converse to that, maybe you don't like something you selected or it was done wrongly and you need to remove it. A subset means, let's say, if you had 30 selected, you might want to select only 15 from those, but you only want the original 30 to be candidates. Switching and clearing, well, that's just if you want it to go away, and switching is obviously if you want to move from the small to the big selection. Now, there are two ways to do it. You can open the SQL window. It's going to look a little bit smaller than it maybe has in the past, but the cool thing is it sort of assists you, right? So words start to come in. So if you're typing in park, whoa, look at that, park's a field. And it's telling you it's a field, as you can see, sort of by this value here. Versus these are keywords, right, and these are functions. Park is like, well, I don't know, let's put in a same thing. Percent H-I-L-L. -L. It should get fill-ins and should get anything else that has a hill in it. You could validate and it's okay. You could run it, right, and there we go, fill-ins and the other ones uh, uh, were to do that. Uh, maybe select anywhere the, you know, the, the, the length. Oh, not going to let me do len. I guess len's not a function I can do here. Um, 
showing my SQL gaps right here, so <laughs> we're not going to go into too much more. But I could just do a, uh, you know, same thing that I did before. Basketball is greater than, whoop, basketball, greater than or equal to 2. Everything's okay. Run it. Right, so it looks a little different. It helps you in a different way, but you can type your same expressions here. But for people who never like that, you have a new option in Pro, and that's adding clauses. And this is actually where it sort of sets everything up for you. You have your field name, and you have what you'd add. So maybe we set the same thing up here, except we'll say, I want to see where there's basketballs. And look, it's got everything we've known before. Is equal to. Does not equal. Is greater than. Is less than. Includes the value. That's sort of like that like I was doing is above average and below average. You know, something I'll show you in a minute. That's that's kind of a neat field right there. But let's say basketball is uh, greater than or equal to, uh, you know, three. We could add that clause. It's sitting there, and we'd run it. There you go. There's 117. And you can keep adding clauses, right? Think of this like an and or an or. You know, if we wanted to do that in desktop, you know, like let's say we wanted to know all the areas where the basketball, there's more than two courts, greater than or equal to two, and, right, meaning both must be true, and also where there's, let's say, an outdoor pool. So pool outdoors greater than or equal to one. All right, there's 38 total courts where there's greater than or equal, or we'll try to make it equal to arc, what we're going to do in pro, greater than or equal to three, greater than or equal to one. So there's 29 courts where there's at least three basketball hoops, and an outdoor pool, right? If I had done or, it would mean, right, has to have greater than three or a pool, right? So there'd be more values. Either one of those has to be true. And both are true. Or either could be true. Same functionality in Pro, it's just located here. That's where you set your and or your or, right? And outdoor pool. The outdoor pool is greater than or equal to 1. Add it. And I can run it. And there you go. There's, there's 29, same kind of category. Right, and I could clear my selections. And I could X these out to clear them. But it's a neater and more comfortable way sort of to do this. You also don't just have to be limited by values, right? I mean, we could set up a weird one here. Like, what if we said the number of basketball courts you have has to be greater than the number of... Oh, apologies. Greater than not a value, but a field, right? So it's greater than whatever value is stored in tennis courts. So this is, like, literally where we're just saying... I want something that has more basketball courts than tennis courts. Right? We'd add it and we'd run it. And what you'd have here is there's 163 where there's more basketball courts than there's tennis courts. So again, you can set it up with values. You can set it up with fields. Right? Clean, easy. You don't have maybe the same degree you'd be able to do um, you know, with SQL, but most of us who are using this might not have an in-depth knowledge uh, of SQL and need to make those sort of like aggressive, um, you know, multi-layered queries, this may be sufficient. And it's, a, you know, kind of a very neat way of doing select by attribute. Um, you know, so that's the big select by attribute difference. Uh, the only other thing you might want to look here is, um, you know, the invert. That would just mean like where the statement you're making is not true. So if we said where basketball is greater than tennis courts, and that selected 163. If I did the invert, it would select anywhere that's not true, right? So 583 minus 163. Neat tool, runs pretty easy. Um, you know, just takes a quick minute to learn sort of the new muscle memory. Uh, select by location, on the other hand, um, you know, is roughly pretty similar. And if you remember that here, select by location, you'd come up and maybe do select by location. And you'd set it up by saying, well, I want to select crimes that are, 
let's say, within a distance. You know, you have all these sort of options about how they relate to each other in space. Maybe they touch. Maybe one contains the other. Um, there was a within a distance. There it is. Are within a distance of, I don't know, let's say a thousand feet. Select that are within a thousand feet of a park. And there you go. Those are all the crimes that are within a thousand feet of the park. And then remember, these are dynamic. So maybe you actually then want to remove from those, right? So let's remove, take away those that are within a distance of 500 feet. So that would effectively only leave those that are between 500 and 1,000, right? We selected everything from 0 to 1,000. Now we're removing anything from 0 to 500. I right? give you like little donut shapes around each of the parks. That's selection there. And it's not terribly different here. Again, it's going to come over to the right. Hey, what do you want me to select? Relationship is up here. This is where you determine what spatial relationship you're interested in. Right? We can set up the same exact thing um, within a distance. So select me crime. It's within a distance of, let's say, 1,000 feet to parks. I want this to be a new selection. I could run it. I could do the same thing then. I could say then remove, you know, parks that are within 500 feet. Right, and the cool thing is these always work together, right? Everything will just select off of a selection. So I could then open the attribute table, and I could further select from those crimes. I could say select from the current selection, right? So from the... fifty-two hundred crimes that I've selected here, I could select from those, those where, let's say, the crime type Primary crime type is equal to gambling, right? So in my random selection, for some reason we are looking between 500 and 1,000 feet of parks for gambling. It's a very, uh, you know, exact string op uh, sting operation. Um, completed with a little warning. What's going on here? Da, 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 da. Not valid with no selection. Did I not do you? Oh, you're a... <laughs> May crimes is the table. There we go. Want the X Y point? Run it. Bobbity boobity beep. There we go. Only four. Only four gambling rings occurring in that very specific 500 to a um, thousand feet uh, from parks. Uh, you know, last thing I want to show you, um, you know, here is select by location uh, also responds just like it did in in ArcGIS. Um, two pre-selections. And what I mean by that is look how I only have this one neighborhood selected. If I go to select by location and I say tell me the parks that intersect Chicago neighborhoods, only those engage. It automatically defaults to what is selected. The difference being, let's say I clear the selections. Now nothing is selected. If I run the same thing, it would select any park that's in any neighborhood. So again, remember, if you ever want to specify the location, you can always select one or more of sort of the selecting features here. And your query will make sure it runs only for those.